My name is Nate Marsh. Uh, thanks for joining this session, Eb, Building and Maintaining Effective Design Tables, or Tips and Tricks on Design Tables. I'm out of the Columbus, Ohio office, and I'm on the tech support team. Uh, here's a brief overview of what I'll try to cover over these next 25, 30 minutes. Alrighty, so first, why use design tables? When should they be used as opposed to other methods of working with configurations? Uh, the answer may be when we have a family of similar parts or assemblies um, with just small differences. My go-to example that is commonly understood is uh, hardware, such as like a hex bolt with different sizes or varying diameters or lengths. Uh, in the case of a hex bolt, not much is changing from a geometry point of view, but maybe a length growing a quarter of an inch uh, by another quarter of an inch, so on and so forth. Same with the screenshot shown. If I, uh, my go-to, uh, let's see here. Here we have four different airfoils, all based off of the same sketch too. However, there's one small difference, and that's the depth of that extrude. The first one, 175, 125, 160, 200. That might be another reason why you would want to use a design table as opposed to having four different part files with uh, similar geometry throughout. Backing up a bit, design tables utilize configuration functionality within SOLIDWORKS. What are configurations? If you're not familiar, configurations are just different versions of a part within a single model file. Uh, configurations can configure most commonly dimensions or suppressing and unsuppressing features and also custom properties. In the Feature Manager tree area, you can select on the Configuration Manager tab and view the different configurations and ultimately access the design table if one exists. Double clicking on that configuration listed is how you can activate that configuration. So if uh, we're looking at this rod created from an extrude in a hole, <clears throat> if I flip with some dimensions in there, if I flip to that configuration manager tab, I can see four configurations exist, toggling through by a double left mouse button click. I can toggle through those different configurations. Alrighty, why are design tables preferred over other methods of adding or editing or modifying existing models and configurations? Because design tables use the power of Excel for formatting these differing family of components. In Excel, we can copy and paste cells, use formulas in Excel in all that tabular format uh, to adjust or add or modify those configurations quickly and easily. Um, in the red box shown on the screen, is a listing of all the configurations. So if we wanted to add another configuration or multiple configurations to this design table, I can select on the seventh 7A cell, type something in, that would be another configuration. And in the purple highlighted box is where my parameters that my design table is controlling are. So if I wanted to add another parameter, maybe another dimension that's gonna be changing for each configuration, I could click to the right of that purple box in the E2 cell and uh, insert that dimension or parameter. How do you insert a design table? From the file menu at the top inside of SOLIDWORKS, you can go to Insert Tables Design Table. Once you insert a design table, there are a few options that appear. Also note you can only have one design table per each part or one design table per an assembly. When we insert a design table, we have three options. We can insert a blank design table. We can insert an auto-created design table or one from a, an existing Excel file. Uh, the blank method, when you insert a design table when it's blank, you can select on the different configurations or parameters that you want to add to that design table. If we select on the auto-create method, uh, that creates a design table and loads all of the parameters and configurations that already exist and the parameters that are already configured uh, populate in the design table. Or lastly, maybe we already have an Excel uh, file or we've created a custom design table and we want to load that in. That's where we can go from file and browse to that Excel file. Uh, and if you link a design table from a file, there's the link to file option in which it can change to the Excel document, save it, reopen SOLIDWORKS, those changes propagate to our model and reverse, if you have SOLIDWORKS open, you make a change to the model, close out of SOLIDWORKS and open the Excel link to file table. Um, those changes should also be displayed in the Excel file. Typically, 
I might, um, so I've got, here's my SOLIDWORKS model with my configurations, insert table, design table with the green X. Once I click on that, I get my options, blank, auto create, or from file with that link to file button. Um, usually, maybe most of the times I might argue, you just do auto create and it automatically pulls the configurations to get you started and the different varying parameters being configured. Once you've inserted a design table into your part or your assembly, you can edit it in two different ways. Uh, you can right click on that newly uh, listed design table and click edit table. This first method opens up a table kind of within the SOLIDWORKS graphics area and the command manager inside of SOLIDWORKS is replaced with Excel ribbons to gain use of Excel functionality and font and formatting. Um, the other method to open up the design table is if you right click on that design table and say edit table in new window, that opens up Excel um, in its own separate window. Remember that this Excel table is kind of embedded into the SOLIDWORKS file if you auto create it or do it blank. Um, if it's linked to file, that's a little different, but if you auto create or do a blank method of inserting the design table, that Excel table is embedded into that SOLIDWORKS file and doesn't exist externally. If you auto, in, auto create the design table, you might notice uh, in the top right uh, image, there's a blank, by default, it's A2. It's an empty cell, which is called the family cell. Um, this cell determines where the parameters that you're gonna be varying begins, and also where the configuration data begins underneath going downwards. You can create rows and columns to the left and above that family cell, like in the bottom right screenshot, maybe you want to add, throw in some comments or have your company name or whatever else. But ultimately, the configuration names go underneath that family cell and the parameters that are being configured to the right of that family cell. If you wanna add a new feature to an existing design table, We'll right click and say edit table. That'll bring open our design table inside of SOLIDWORKS. Changes that command manager to that Excel ribbon. So there's our design table for this rod. From the graphics area or from the feature tree, we can select on different features or different dimensions that we want to add. Maybe I want this one diameter. So I'm gonna select in the next parameter cell, that G cell. Select on my dimension, pops it in. Right now it's set to a value of one. Maybe for some of my configurations, I want that value to be one. Maybe for some of my other configurations, I want that value to be something else. Maybe for my six inch configurations, I want that value to be one and a half for that diameter. And once I'm done, I can just left click out in my graphics area that saves it, that updates my design table, it updates my model. If I click rebuild and toggle back through my configurations, now my six inch configurations have a dimension value of that 1.5. My three inch, because that's what I threw in, still has a value of one. When you're first inserting a design table, or if you right click on that design table and select edit feature, there are a few options listed. Under edit control, we can allow model edits to update the design table, or block model edits that would update the design table. The allow option allows the design table parameters to be edited in SOLIDWORKS model, and then the design table updates accordingly. The block option does the opposite, throws an error if you tries to try to make a change to something controlled by the design table. I'll show you really quick. So let's say we have a design table. Looks like what we were just looking at a second ago with that pipe diameter in there. We have one and a half inch for the six configurations and one for the three inch configurations. Right click, edit feature. That'll take us back to our design table options. Here I have it set to allow 
If I try to change it, it gives me a warning saying, hey, you're about to change this in the design table and in your model. It updates it, 1.1 now. If I look at the table, that update propagates to my design table. Now it's 1.1 for that configuration I was in. Left click takes us back to our model. And if I select on the block model edits, now if I try to make a change to that dimension, your attempted change is currently locked by a design table. So we get an error. So that's what that allow or block does. The other options listed when inserting a design table include new parameters and new configurations. If a model has a design table, if we suppress a feature in one configuration but not another, or if we change a dimension in one configuration but not another, or if we assign a change to a custom property to a configuration, the next time we edit that table, we'll see a list of those things, those features or dimensions, and we can select on any of those things and add them to our design table. If a model has a design table and we add a configuration, maybe we right click in the configuration manager and say add configuration or copy and paste, a configuration. The next time we edit that design table, we'll see a list including that new configuration, and at that point we can click and add that new configuration to add it to our design table. When you use design table inside of SolidWorks, it's important to format your tables properly. Uh, syntax is critical if you have an extra space somewhere or you don't have that at um, sign or you don't have that dollar sign. Um, in certain cases, it's going to either throw an error or it just won't work as you wish it should. So just pay attention to your syntax. Also note that it's not case sensitive. Some more general principles, dimension appropriately. Um, also avoid creating children to features that are going to be suppressed because by the rules of SOLIDWORKS, um, the children will also be suppressed because of it being history based. Uh, consider how complex your project is, how many features and dimensions and parameters are going to be involved in this design table? How many configurations are you going to need to create? Is the model finished? Are you, is it halfway finished? Are you going to be adding a bunch more features and sketches? Are there external references? What about SOLIDWORKS equations or Excel functionality, Excel equations? Like I said a moment ago, for organizational purposes, maybe naming for your sketches and your features, it's always a good idea to name your sketches accordingly and your features accordingly. If not, you'll be stuck trying to remember what sketch seven is or what cut extrude three is, as opposed to a dimension named pipe diameter or a feature named rod. Um, uh, if you're not familiar, you can rename sketches and features a few different ways by either doing a slow left click or by selecting on it and hitting F2 or if you double click, that'll bring up the modify window and you can rename and modify your sketches or dimension names there. Also, we can double click on a feature to display its dimensions. Um, we can double click on it in the graphics area or we can double click on it from the feature tree. That should show us the dimensions relevant to creating that feature. You can also right click on the annotations folder, I'll show you here in the Feature Manager design tree. So this right click on the Annotations folder and select on Show Feature Dimensions. So this pipe has a few dimensions. If I right click, I can say Hide All. Maybe there's too many dimensions being shown or I don't care about those other dimensions. Maybe I want to add this hole, this 0.5 diameter to our design table. Right click, Edit Table. Select on my next parameter cell, which is that H. I can left click on that dimension that's shown up and I can modify or configure, maybe I want it to be 0.4 for my 3-inch configurations and 0.5 for my 6-inch configurations because it's allowed. I can make those changes. And if I flip back through, that hole is 0.5 and 0.4 respectively. Some more tips, start simple. Don't get in over your head. Uh, working with Excel and design tables can get uh, cumbersome. Uh, don't make it too complex, test it. So every once in a while, don't uh, spend three hours and realize at the end of that three hours that you haven't tested it or you're not, you have no idea why it's not working. Go slow and continually test it as with anything. Um, if you need to add user notes, 
you can put a dollar sign user underscore notes where the next configuration would be to maybe um, organize or if you're swapping out files with someone else so that they can understand your thought process behind your naming scheme. Um, also, if you right click on that design table in the configuration manager, you can save the table, the Excel table externally, save it out as an Excel file. This is one way to kind of circumvent that limitation of only having one design table per part or one design table per assembly. You could have a part, create your design table. Once you're done, save it out externally so you have a copy. You can then delete it from your part. And if you care to, insert another design table, create it differently if you want to or care to, save that out externally. And now you have two design tables that are controlling the one part. And then you can always insert design table from file, browse to the one you want to use and link it or not. Also note that like in the right hand photo or a screenshot, that C column was skipped. So it's length and then it's nothing and then it's uh, dollar sign state at whole, whether that whole is suppressed or unsuppressed, the U or the S. Um, since we skipped a column, the C column, it, SolidWorks is gonna stop and not going to pay attention to that whole and if it says unsuppressed or suppressed, so you can't skip any rows, you can't skip any columns. Same way with the configurations. So if I had a, in my row seven, I left it blank and then I typed something in row eight, it's not gonna acknowledge that row eight because I've stopped, I've skipped a row, SolidWorks stopped as well and doesn't continue to create configurations or configure those parameters. All right, bringing it all back together is uh, maybe a pipe example. So let's say we have a pipe and uh, 106 different sizes and schedules, four different materials for each of those size schedules. That means it's over 400 size schedule material configurations. Each size schedule material is in quarter, eight, quarter or in eighth inch increments from one inch to 20 feet or 240 inches, which is over 1900 different length configurations. Each one of those length configurations have over 400 different size schedule material configurations which would leave us with over 800,000 total configurations. So, let's say inside of SolidWorks, I've manually created an Excel file. It's not too complex. Down the left-hand side is all my configuration names. Across the top, again, is all the parameters that I've maybe named appropriately. I also have a user notes. Maybe I want to type in what that parameter is configuring nominal diameter, length, description. So that's just an Excel, not linked to anything yet. So now I've got this pipe model with one configuration you can see in the left. If I want to insert my design table, this pipe is created from an extrude and a cut revolve. I can go to insert tables, design table. How do I want to create it? Well, from a file, if I want it linked, I can, which I'm going to do, I can check that link, browse to my Excel file, select on that design table that I've created, hit the green check, pop that design table in with all those configurations and all those sizes of all those dimensions accordingly. Left click into my graphics area to flip back to my SOLIDWORKS model, tells us the design table generated those following configurations. If I flip back to my configuration manager now, I can see all those configurations with those respective sizes and names were generated. So how did I come up with this Excel file document? Um, in this manually created design table, I use some Excel functionality to uh, help with creating all these different sizes and configuring all these dimensions. Um, we can use formulas, drop down boxes, conditional formatting, concatenations. So here's back to my Excel. For this length, for instance, I know I want it in eighth inch increments, so I take the previous cell and add 0.125 and previous cell 0.125, so on and so forth. I could even go all the way down past three down to 240 if I wish. 
schedules. So right now it's set to 20. Uh, if I wanted to set it to maybe schedule 30, and also my configuration name. If you look at the top where the it's a, it's a, uh, it's driving my equation or my uh, configuration name. I'm pulling the material. I'm pulling the schedule. I'm pulling the nominal diameter. So that's being populated for my configuration name. Um, lastly, uh, the configuration publisher. Not many people know about this hidden tool, this uh, configuration publisher. What this does is it creates a property manager to allow easy configuration selection, like when you insert a part into an assembly. What does that mean? It's kind of similar to, let's say you drag and drop a washer from your toolbox or a hex bolt into an assembly, and you get some options and drop downs for how you want the thread displayed or what length do you want, similar to that. We'll be looking at the single line table first, and then we'll jump to a multiple line table. Uh, so, that screenshot shown right there is what that single line table would look like. It's a design table. It includes all of the parameters across the top. That might change. It only includes one configuration line, that 2A, that default, and that dollar sign part number is used to control that name of the new configurations. This is what the configuration publisher looks like. And in just a second, I'll show you how to get to it. It's kind of hidden. So here's our created design table. Pretty simple, nothing too crazy, with our parameters across the top. If I in SolidWorks, open up my model. To get to this configuration publisher right now, it just has one default configuration. I have to first insert this design table from my file. I'll link it to it. Browse to that single line design table. Hit the green check. So now that my part model has a design table per the specs of creating a configuration, getting to the configuration publisher. If I click configuration manager, I can right click near the top and say configuration publisher, dot, dot, dot. Click on that, that'll pop up this configuration publisher. Alrighty, now that we're there, we want to fill this configuration publisher out so that it's pulling from that design table. So I can drag and drop maybe a list drop down. Maybe I want to name that list uh, nominal diameter. What do I want it to be pulled from? The nominal diameter dimension, a list value. What values do I want to be able to select on for that sketch? Quarter, three eighths, half, three quarter. And this can get as complex or as simple as you want. Maybe I want another drop down. Maybe I want to call this outer diameter. Maybe I want it linked to that parent nominal diameter. And you get the gist. I could add a few more attributes, material, length. So finally, it would look something like this. There's also an SW SOLIDWORKS preview, what it would look like inside of SOLIDWORKS. So here, if I open up that part, that pipe, once I've added that configuration publisher, you also notice that property manager appears. If you right click, you can say edit feature. That'll take us back to that configuration publisher if you wanted to make some changes or look at it. There's that SW preview. You select on each of one of those list items, those attributes. This is what it's gonna look like inside of SOLIDWORKS. I can close out of this configuration publisher, take me back to my model. So what does that all mean? So. Let's say I uh, were in inches. I start a brand new assembly in inches, and I insert this part. Now what happens is I get this configured component dropdown where I can select on all these different parameters. What material, what schedule, what nominal diameter, what length, maybe three and a quarter inch, because it falls between one and 240. What it does is it goes to that design table, 
and it generates a model per those specs. I typed in 3.25 and there's that 3.25 length. One step further and last is this multiple configuration model, uh, multiple row design table. You can use this method if the model already contains all the configurations you need. The design table, again, you have to have a design table to get to that configuration publisher. The design table needs to include a row for each configuration and a column for each variable and values for each of those variables. So that design table kind of shown to the right would be complete. It lists all my configurations, all my parameters with all of the data filled out. And lastly, if I open up that part file, flip to the configuration manager, it has a design table already in it. Right click edit table, bring up my table inside of SolidWorks. I can scroll through and see all of my configurations and all of my parameters that are being driven by that design table. Property Manager, that's that configuration publisher now. This is what it would look like, my length, my width, is there a hole, is there no hole? And similar to the single line table for the configuration publisher, if I insert or create a brand new assembly, insert this part that has that configuration publisher, I can again specify the parameters, the length maybe, the width, the depth of this thing, the thickness, is there a hole, is there no hole, and once I hit the green check, it'll kind of auto-generate that part file per my specs. And it looks like we're cutting it a little close, but uh, are there any questions? The question is, can you configure material? Material, yes, you can. I don't know how in-depth, I don't know if I can get too in-depth because it might take me a little while, but yes, you can. Yeah, I believe you just have to know what family the material's from and what ma material of that family. So kind of like steel, and inside of steel, maybe you're going with, um, say, like a 304 stainless. You need to know those two things. If you know those, you can you can actually configure it. Yeah, you There's can There's a syntax for that to help. Yeah, in the custom properties, so you have one configuration with the property being material, uh, whatever stainless steel, and you have another configuration with that same material custom property being aluminum or whatever. As long as you so, know the syntax, yeah, syntax is critical. So we've got one here It says, do you recommend deleting unused configurations to increase stability? Uh, I would have to follow that question up with a few questions myself. I, I where do I start? Uh, why would you be deleting the configurations? Are, is that configuration ever going to be used ever again? If not, probably get rid of it. It'll maybe uh, the more configurations you add to a model, the bigger that model is going to grow. So remember, if you have eight hundred thousand configurations, you're going to have a monster file. So um, yes, probably. Um, but if there's a chance that configuration is used for something or in some assembly somewhere, just be careful because if you delete that configuration and that assembly is pulling that configuration of that part model, that could create a whole lot of problems and errors. Okay. So I've got another one that says, what about controlling mass or density? Um, so, I guess that's kind of a, a continuing of the material question. Um, if you use the materials, it's going to control the mass density, but I believe you can do a user-defined density. Um, that one I have to check on. I'm not sure sure if you know that one, Nate. Yeah, so I mean, I think it would be kind of along the same lines of configuring density, uh, kind of like configuring a material. The material, typically, I think it maybe forces you to, uh, to have a density assigned to that material. So when you assign a material to a part, it's assigned a density as well. You could create a custom property and call it density or whatever and link it to the density, which is probably being pulled from the material or anything you type in. And um, you could type in some custom value. And then for a different configuration, you could also have a density or whatever uh, custom property listed and type in that respective. So maybe you have 
one configuration as aluminum, one configuration as steel. The aluminum would have a, and you also have a density uh, custom property for both one of those configurations. The aluminum configuration would display one density value, and the stainless steel one would display a different density value if you have it linked or you want to manually type something in. Okay. Um, is there a limit to how many configurations can be created? So not really, but there is kind of a law of diminishing return. Um, at a certain point, things kind of start to fall off the cliff when you have too many configurations from personal experience. I usually find anywhere above three to 400 configurations, things start going kind of wonky. Um, that's where you have to leverage, do I use configurations or am I really wanting to use a configurator? Okay, so with, with that being said, you, you look at what you're configuring and you say to yourself, does this have infinite possibilities of configuration? If it does, you almost want to use a configurator that will generate a unique item in that situation. If you have a finite number of configurations within a certain realm of certainty, then you can use configurations, but at a certain point when you have a large number of configurations, you might want to think about splitting them up into multiple files based upon size. So it's just something to take into consideration. I'm not sure what you've seen, Nate, but that's kind of what I've seen over the last 15, 16 years. Yeah, I'm with you. You don't want to get too crazy and have thousands upon thousands or you're going to kill yourself in battling SolidWorks, but yeah, I'm with you. So it says, are there any benefits of using design tables over the regular configuration window inside of SolidWorks, um, a simplified Excel layout. I mean, it really does depend on what you're comfortable with. I mean, the, the tables inside of SolidWorks, when you right-click and say, configure my, my feature or configure my dimension, they're really nice, but they don't have as much power as Excel. If you like concatenations, if, if you like drop-down data validation lists, Excel is going to be able to do that for you. Um, the SOLIDWORKS tables, as they currently stand, don't. I mean, I've heard SOLIDWORKS over the years wanting to go away from them, but, um, but still they would have to reinvent Excel, and Excel is a very powerful tool. So it really did, does depend on what you're comfortable with. Well, these are all really good questions. I don't think I've had this many questions all week, so this is pretty awesome. So it's a really good topic. So if you have other questions and you don't have time to ask them, you can, you can definitely um, address them to support at CATI.com, or you can direct them to me directly at bobm at CATI.com. Um, and I can filter that onto the, the proper channels. So thank you all very much for your time. And have a great week. We have um, a great weekend. We have three more weeks of these presentations. We've got more good content going on in the AM and the PM every day through the month of October. So thank you very much, and feel free to visit us at www.cati.com.